Heart Ministry Network. Ah, oh, word from the Lord with Evangelist Arthur L. Weathersby. Arthur L. Weathersby in Ministries International and the Church of Disciples of Yeshua International. Oh, I greet you in the precious and the matchless name of the Lord and Savior, Yeshua the Messiah. Uh, for he alone, once again, is worthy to be of that honor, that distinction. We welcome you back for the fourth and final segment of this particular subject that we've been on. And I pray that you've been following us and enjoying what God is sharing with you about choices. Amen. Because it's important for you to know because the Bible says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. That ain't going to be your story. That is not going to be your story if you're watching Heart Ministry Network. There are way too many programs, way too many folks coming on here sharing the word of the Lord with you that you can't say that I have no knowledge. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's the choice you make. All right, I'll tell you what, let's go into the reading of the scripture. I'm just going to do uh, Matthew 7, 14, and then I'm going to let the Holy Ghost do what he does. That, that's what I do anyway. I let him do what he does, and he'll direct me to go wherever he wants me to go. But right now, we're just dealing with Matthew, the 7th chapter, the 14th verse. And we're reading from the Parallel Bible, um, King James Amplified on either side. I'm, I'm hanging on the right side, which is the right-hand side, I should say. The right-hand side, which is the Amplified Bible, and this is what it reads. It's, but small is the gate, and narrow, difficult to travel the path that leads the way to everlasting life. And there are few who find it. Oh, my God, yeah. Well. Thus is the reading of God's word. The word of the Lord is already blessed. May he continue to bless the hearing, reading, doing of his holy, blessed word. But the Bible tells us that we all must be a doer of this word and not just a hearer. Gracious and eternal Father, at this time, I humbly come before you, God, to say thank you. God, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this moment. I thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made, and I will rejoice and be glad therein. God, I thank you. When I woke up this morning, new mercies were already distributed into my account to allow me to come forth and go forth throughout this day, glorifying and honoring your holy and righteous name. Now, Father, before I go further, I must, I must say that there might have been something that I may have done. From the last time I spoke to you up until now, my thought, word, or deed, it wasn't pleasing within your sight. I need your forgiveness. Create within me a clean heart and renew a right standing spirit within me. Let this mind be in me that was also in Christ Jesus. I need a mind to work according to your will and your good pleasure, and I'll be always ever mindful to give you the honor, the praise, and the glory. Father God, while we're talking about minds, open up our hearts, minds, and understanding for those that are tuned into this podcast. Father God, I pray that they incline their ear to hear what the spirit of the living God is saying to each and every one of them. And in their inclination, let them become a doer of this word and not only a hearer. Now, me, I know who I am, but I know I got a decrease. You, on the other hand, I, I just cannot begin to say who you are. You are much, much more than I can, or my feeble mind could even uh, come up with. So therefore, I know that you need to increase. That's why I'm extremely mindful to say I want the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, to be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in the precious and matchless name of my Lord and Savior, Yeshua, the Messiah, I pray. Thanksgiving in my heart. Amen, amen, amen. We continue on this series. Uh, what choice will you make? Amen. For the first three weeks, we've talked about choices. We've outlined in various portions of the scriptures uh, showing you about choices and how we can make them and we can make right ones, we can make wrong ones. But you know what? Uh, the, the, the fact of the matter is we're going to make them. And then you also have to realize this, that when you make a choice, and I'm going to, this is the first time I'm bringing this out. When you make a choice, you need to be what? Accountable or be, no, be responsible for the choice that you make. In other words, be be willing to own up to the fact that you made that choice. Because, you know, back in my day, it was a comedian by the name of Flip Wilson. And he had this character named Geraldine. And he was prone to say, the devil made me do it. And some of us are quick to try to run that same line, um, thinking that that's going to get get you by. But let me tell you, the devil can't make us do anything. He don't have that kind of power. Uh, the only thing that he can do is go to God and see what God will allow him to do. You don't believe me? Go check out Job, the first chapter and the second chapter, and see how God had to 
uh, gave the devil limited permission to do anything that he uh, that 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 he could do within his power. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, the devil made me do it. Oh, my God, yeah. And then there's some of us that, oh, my God, yeah, here we go. I, I, I had to bring this out. I didn't know I was going to bring it out. I, I try to avoid it as much as I can, y'all. Y'all just don't know. Uh, God knows my heart. Lord have mercy. If I haven't heard that too many times, I, I haven't heard that enough to make me sick 99,000 times over again. You know, when you say that, you, you ain't fooling nobody because what you're saying is that, you know what, I, I, made a, I made a mistake. I erred. I went, I chose to go that way, and I knew I was going that way. Oh, my God, I'm glad you said you knew you was going that way because I got word for you. Uh, I'm in James. I'm in the fourth chapter, and I'm in the 17th verse, and watch what it says. So any person who knows what is right to do but does not do it, to him it is sin. So when you say God knows your heart, and you think that's like a get out of jail free card, well, it really isn't. Because Jeremiah 17, 9 describes our heart. It says the heart is deceitful above all things. That thing is extremely sick, it's wicked. And who can know it? Verse 10 says, now I, the Lord, I'm going to test the mind. I'm going to try the heart. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to see what it is that about you that, that caused you to do what you did. What was the motives behind what that made you make that choice? Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to reward you according to the choice that you made, the motive behind what you did. So, so to say that God knows your heart, you had better make sure that your heart is in the right place. Matter of fact, if I was you, I better, I, I better make sure before I spit them words out of my mouth that I went and did Psalm 50, 51 and 10, create within me a clean heart and renew a right standing spirit within me. Because if he don't clean out that junk in your heart, then that mess that he already knows, that's what he sees. Mm -hmm. And then that 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 stuff on the inside of you causes you to do what you do because it's, the Bible says that what defiles a man is not from without, it's from within. And that's in your heart. Oh my God, it's in your heart. Oh my God, that's a song by the Williams brothers, I think it's no, it's, 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 it's who is that? Not the Kent, no, the Kent is in my heart. Kent the spirituals, I do believe, is in my heart. So I'm in I'm in the seventh cha I'm in the seventh chapter of Matthew. I am. I am. Oh, no, I don't say that. I'm in the seventh chapter of Matthew, and I'm going to go to that third, that 14th verse. That's what I said I was going to do, and that's what I'm going to do, I promise you. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to read it to you from the com the Jewish Complete Study Bible. Watch what it says in 714. It says this. Go in. No, it says beware. No, it says but if... But it is a narrow gate and hard road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Watch what it says. But it is a narrow gate and a hard road that leads to life. And you know what's hard about that road? Is that because there's obstacles along the way. There's things that there's challenges along the way. There's trials, there's tests, there's tribulations. The devil is on is, is, is in the way. And yourself. I already told you the worst enemy that you have is not from without, it's really from within. Because there's no thing good dwelling in your flesh and that sinful nature of ours, y'all, it looks for every opportunity that it can to rear up its ugly head and present itself because it wants to please itself. That's the choice that your flesh wants to make to please itself. But when you operate from the spirit and you are born again, then you look to do what? Please God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it says it's a hard road. It's a hard road. It's a hard, it's a hard knocks life. <laughs> yeah, it is a hard knocks life because there's so many things. Now, I'm gonna tell you something. Um, uh, this year, uh, this in the latter the latter quarter of, of 2021 and coming into 2022, some people might say, you know, Evangelist, if I was going through what you was going through, I probably would give up. I would just give up. No, child, I. I admit, I've gone through some stuff over the last five months or thereabouts. But let me tell you, it ain't come nowhere near close to telling me to give up. Matter of fact, it just had me gird up, gird up myself. Why is that? Because I know that the battle is on. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities in high places. And the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. They're mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. And where is this battle fought? It's not fought from without. It's fought from within. Your mind.
mind. So therefore, my mind has to be fortified. It has to be oh, secure in what it, and oh my God, in what I believe and what I know. And I thank God that I don't know everything, but I know enough of what I know about the word of God. And I believe explicitly in what God says in his word and the Holy Ghost, so much so that the choice that I make is that I choose to fight. I choose to live my life in accordance to his will. That means that something comes my way. I'm like this, greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. And if God be for me, then who can be against me? No, yeah, one of my, my, my favorites, no weapons formed against me shall prosper. But, 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 but that's because of the, what I chose to do. I chose to serve him. I chose to serve him. Now, some people have, yeah, Pastor, remember you said that we don't really choose to serve God. God chose us. He says who he foreknew. He, for he, yeah, who he predestined, he foreknew. I understand that. But let me tell you, while I'm here on this earth and I'm, I'm making declarations, I have to make a choice because I had to do Romans 10, 9 to get saved. And then once I did Romans 10, 9, then I had to do uh, 2 Timothy 2, 15. What is that? Study to show myself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So that I may be able to not only be able to understand God's word, but to be able to teach God's word so that somebody else might be able to understand it. And then what else did you have to do? I had to choose to trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding in all of my ways. Acknowledge him so he could direct my path. In other words, I had to choose to give my life away so he can use me. That's right. I had to surrender all. Yeah, all to thee, my precious Savior. I surrender all. I made that choice. And it's a choice that I'm willing to make and I had to make because of the relationship that he established with me. He established that relationship and he didn't do it. He didn't do it so that I can just continue to live a life any old kind of way. I was a sinner prior to salvation. Why would I be a sinner and end the salvation? I'm sorry. God is not boo-boo the fool. He ain't going to be saving you so you can continue to live a life that just contrary to his will and to his way. That don't make no sense whatsoever. Matter of fact, Jesus, Yeshua, he spoke about this. He says, you know what? Y'all tried to call me Beelzebub. But if I do the works of Bills above, he first off he questioned them. He says, what, what about your sons? What are they doing? And then furthermore, I'm doing the works of Bills above according to you. How would I be doing the works of Bills above when my works are good? And don't you know a house divided that it cannot stand? It cannot stand. It, it, there's no way that a house divided can stand. Because it has, it has no structure. It has not, it's not solidified. Oh, my God. Have you ever seen a divided house? Oh, oh, just imagine. Oh, my God, a divided house. It would be like this, y'all. It'd be, oh, my God. Yeah, if wind come along, that thing would just knock it down or, or knock it off its moorings. Because why? The, the, oh, my God. The union that brings it together allows that house to really stand. Now, I know that it's, it, it's the foundation has to be strong and secure. But if that house is not secure from or oh, from the infrastructure, don't you know that thing ain't going to stand? Oh, my God. Yeah. So I'm standing. I'm standing on the promise of God. I stand on the word of God because I know his word is true. And it's a choice that I make. And, and, and you have a right. You have the ability. You have a choice that you can make, too. You can choose to follow the word of God or you can choose to go the other way. But don't you know if you choose to go the other way, then, you know, the way you sin is death. But but I'm back, I got to go back to Matthew 7, 14. It said, but there was a, there was a gate and a hard road that leads to life. Only a few find it. Only a few find it. Now, mind you, I don't think that it's so hidden that it cannot be found. Because there's no secret no more about, about God. His word is available to everybody. Don't you know that there's... There's thousands of translations of the Bible that, that's accessible to every language in the, in the, on the planet, I do believe. So God ain't trying to hide. He wants to be found. But you have to want to find him. That's why I'm, 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 when it says only a few who find it, I'm saying there are only a few who are looking for it. Oh, my God, yeah, because many are called. But only a few are chosen. Oh. Only a few are chosen because God chose. He chooses. 
but we have to choose him or as opposed to this life and the world. Oh my God, yeah. Yeah, where do I want to go? I think I want to take you to Romans, the seventh chapter, because I told you about what happened with the Apostle Paul and about why it's so hard. Yeah, let's let's talk about that hard road. Let's go to Romans, the seventh chapter. Let's pick it up at that, at that 14th verse, I do believe. Yeah, let's go to Romans, the seventh chapter, and pick it up at that 14th verse. I might open that Jewish Hebrew study Bible again, but I'm, I'm going to Romans. I'm, 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 I'm I'm in Romans, but am I in that 14th verse yet? No, I'm, obviously I'm not, but I am now. We know that the law is spiritual, but I'm a creature of the flesh, worldly, self-reliant, carnal, unspiritual, sold into slavery to sin and serving under his control. That's the Apostle Paul. Now, he ain't talking about when he was saw. And don't you know his name? I, I, I don't know where his name got changed from Paul to Saul. I know he got changed from within, but in the Jewish Bible, it, it refers to Saul, y'all. Um, okay, Paul, my, Paul might be, see, Paul, Paul, Paul might be, uh, I, I want to say English translation of Saul. I want to say that, but I don't want to be 100%, I'm not 100% certain of that, but like he says, I know. You know, this was after he was um, transformed, y'all. Uh, this lets you know about that duality and that personality that we have. Watch what it says. For I do not understand my own actions and baffled and bewildered by them. I do not practice what I want to do. But I'm doing the very thing I hate and yielding to my human nature, my worldliness, my sinful capacity. You see, Paul is willing to admit that this is a choice that he made because he says he's yielding. That means he, he surrendered. He gave up into that thing. So he had to make a choice to give up to that thing. Because why are you saying he had to make a choice? I don't know about you. But when I say this particular verse right here, it tells me it supersedes what I just read that Paul said he was going through. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. So I don't have to yield over to my flesh. I don't have to yield over to my worldly, earthly desires because I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. All I got to do is remember to keep my mind stayed on him and let him keep me in perfect peace. So my mind is not up in a in an in a upheaval, y'all. It's not in a state of confusion, like a ball of confusion that, that, that will allow me to go in all over the place because that was, that's what can happen with a lot of us when we find ourselves making wrong choices because we cannot get our minds fixated on that what we need to have it fixated on. Oh my God, yeah, mm -hmm. 16. Now, if I habitually do what I do not want to do, that sounds like a lot of double speak. Let me read that again. Now, if I habitually do what I do not want to do, that means I agree with the law, confessing that it is good, moral, excellent. Well, nothing wrong with the law. The law was excellent. It said that we were doing stuff that we should not have been doing, and, 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 and that's what it was. All it did was just, it was like a teacher, a, ta a strict taskmaster trying to show us that our wrongness, showing us our wrongness while yet showing us God's rightness. Oh my God, that's the righteousness. Mm -hmm. 17. So now that if that is the case, that it then it is no longer I who do it, the disobedient thing which I despise, but the sin nature which lives in me. You see, there's a part of us, that duality within us, y'all, that we have to be mindful of. It exists. It is really real. That sin nature of ours, that sin nature says, I want to do what I want to do it's my thing. I choose to live this life the way I want to choose to live my life. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Okay, don't let me go there. That's another time in another place. For 18, for I know that nothing good lives in me. Oh, my God. That's right. That is in my flesh, my human nature, my worldliness, my sinful capacity. For the willingness to do good is present in me, but the doing of good is not. Because in my flesh, there ain't no good thing dwelling in me. So guess what ain't in me? It is not the Holy Spirit because he does not dwell in my flesh. And he does not dwell in my flesh. Because if the Holy Spirit was dwelling in my flesh, then I would have another choice that I could make. And, I, and, if, and, and if I chose him, then guess what? I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Oh my God, yeah. For the good that I want to do, I do not do, but I practice the very evil that I do not want. You see, that's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. We have to choose to do stuff. So the very the good that you do that you don't want to do, the good that I want to do, that ain't what you do. You don't do it. But I practice the very evil that I do not want. Now, why is it so easy for you to do the evil? Because you practice that thing. 
And anytime you practice something, guess what you're able to do? Perfect it. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I remember when I used to play basketball back in the day. And I know many of y'all sitting there saying, yeah, right, Pastor Vanders. What are you talking about playing basketball? I said, no, I don't know. Don't, don't go there. You don't know. You better ask somebody. I absolutely could play some ball. And I know enough about the game that I can probably talk the game. Or I can talk a better game than what you can play. Oh, my God, don't get me started. But, yeah, back in the day when I was able to play basketball, I used to do something. And I got a friend that if you come across him, I guarantee you this is going to come out of his mouth. He says, you know, Arthur Weathersby, one time in Buffalo, New York, because that's where I'm from, in February, in the winter time. That's right, just in case you don't know, uh, February is winter time in Buffalo, New York. You better believe it. It is. Uh, he came outside. It was sun shining outside. He brought his shovel outside and his basketball, and he cleared off the playground basketball court. He did what? He cleared off the playground basketball court. He did what? He shoveled the snow off that playground basketball court, and he was out there practicing. And the brother said that, you know why? That, that explains something. That explains why you were as good as you were. What he did not know is that I had injured the right knee, a lateral torn meniscus, a cartilage in my, in my right knee, and I was told to stay off of it for that it would heal on its own. And it was healing for about a month. I got, I got ants in my pants and I needed to go play some ball, y'all, not dance. And, 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 I, and I came outside and I said, well, you know what? I can't do nothing with the right side, but I can do left. So I came outside practicing with my left hand. I was practicing dribbling with my left hand. I practiced layups with my left hand. I even practiced shooting with my left hand. And so when, the, when, I, when my knee healed, my right knee healed, and somebody was checking me, they were guarding me. They would guard me to go right because that was my dominant hand. But they didn't know that I had a new dominant hand. It was my left hand. Why? Because I was practicing in the wintertime when everybody else was in the house watching the cartoons or whatever they was watching. Oh, my God. Yeah. So when you practice something, you perfect that thing. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it goes on to say, I think I'm in the 18th, in the 18th verse. I think. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm in the 19th verse. It says for God, for the good. No, I'm in the 20th verse. But if I'm doing the very thing I do not want to do, I am no longer the one doing it. That is not me that acts, but the sin nature which lives in me. That repeats itself again. Because when you give, when you don't, when you mess around and make the wrong choice, and you just gave yourself away, not to God so he can use you. You just gave yourself away to your sin nature so you can be used by it. Oh my God, yeah, 21st verse. So if I find it, so I find it to be the law of my inner self, that evil is present in me. The one who wants to do good. You see, you have to come to that conclusion and understand that and be willing to admit this about yourself. Many of us don't want to admit that there's a bad or dark side to us. But let me tell you, I tell people with the quickness, you just don't know. You better be glad that I'm saved and born again. Because if I if I allow that Rebecca to come up out of me, and I say Rebecca, because that's my mama's name. But I ain't saying that she got a dark side or nothing like that. But when you got on the wrong side of my mama, let me tell you what she would do. Oh, my God, you wouldn't want to be on the wrong side of Rebecca because she would give you more than what you asked for. And, 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 and she could do some stuff, y'all. And, and I could too if I allowed myself to operate out of my flesh. But since I no longer live by the flesh, but I live by the spirit and I walk by the spirit and oh my God, my whole, everything has changed. I, oh my, I don't talk the same way. I don't act the same way no more. Oh my God, now am I complete yet? No, I'm not complete. I'm yet being completed and perfected in the ways of God by the Holy Ghost. Because how is that happening? Because I'm being sanctified daily as I die, as I, oh my, my God, as I mortify the deeds of my flesh on a day to day basis. I'm becoming more and more like Yeshua the Messiah each and every day. I ain't there yet, but I'm, I'm much closer than what I was. Oh my God. And you better be grateful and thankful for that. Oh my God, yeah. I know I am. Uh huh. 22 says, For I joyfully delight in the law of God in my inner self with my new nature. That's right. I get joy when I think about uh, what he's done for me. And I get joy when I think about the relationship that I have with him. Amen. Because I remember, uh, I remember the way it was when I was outside in the ark of safety. I remember because it wasn't that long ago. It was only 26 years ago, 43 years of my life, but I lived in degradation. I lived in the world. I lived in my flesh, according to the dictates of my flesh. But oh, what a what a change has happened to me since I did what? Since I made the choice to serve him. Oh, my God. Uh, verse 23 says, but I see a different law and rule of action in the members of my body. 
in his appetites and desires, waging war against the law of my mind. Why did I tell you? Subduing me and making me a prisoner of the law of sin, which is within my members. The apostle Paul was found himself going through this. And from time to time, you and I are going to find ourselves going through this. But guess what? We can, we can, oh my God, we can get our strength renewed because don't you know when you find yourself in this type of situation right here and you can't figure out how to get out of that thing? Let me tell you, God has a way for you. And how is, and what is that way? Well, I'll tell you what, look to the hills. From where shall your help come from? Know that all your help come from the Lord God that made heaven and earth. And I guarantee he'll see you through this thing. He'll bring you up out of that situation. And we thank God for what we've done. We thank God for this particular series. What choice will you make? My God, I tell you what, you I don't know what the Lord's going to have for us next month. But I tell you what, it don't get no gooder than that. I know I just said something don't make no yeah, gooder. It's gooder than gooder. Yeah, I'm Evangelist Arthur Weatherby, a word from the Lord. I'm with Evangelist Arthur Weatherby of Arthur Weatherby Ministries International and the Church of Disciples of Yeshua International. And you know what? You're living your best life when you're living your life in Yeshua, the Messiah. Until I come back at you another time, another place, another moment. And you know what? I don't know what to tell you. Well, I do. But can I tell you? Okay, I'm going to tell you. We do the thing. And the Lord. God bless you. Bye-bye.